let someone else in. Okay, so we are ready to start. Uh, so welcome everybody uh, to the LMFL uh, webinar uh, of today. Uh, the presentation of today is given uh, by Metin Muradoglu, uh, and uh, it's about uh, the effect of viscoelasticity and surfactant on uh, turbulent public channel flows. Uh, let me firstly uh, first introduce uh, uh, Metin Muradoglu. Uh, so, Dr. Muradoglu is a professor of uh, mechanical engineering at uh, Koch University. He received his uh, bachelor's degree in uh, electrical engineering from uh, Istanbul Technical. Uh, uh, university in 1992. His master and PhD degrees uh, are both from uh, Cornell University in 1997 and 2000 respectively. He also worked as a postdoc at Cornell for about uh, 18 month, months uh, before joining the Koch University faculty in 2001. Uh, he has had uh, visiting professor positions uh, at uh, Harvard, Notre Dame and uh, uh, Princeton Universities and at the Max Planck Institute for uh, Intelligence System in Stuttgart. Uh, Dr. Muradoglu's work has been uh, recognized by multiple awards, uh, including the Turkish Academy of Science, Outstanding uh, Young Scientist Awards in 2000, award in 2009, uh, and the Scientific uh, and Technological Research, Research Council of Turkey, Kubita, Encouragement Award in 2010. Uh, he has been an, an associate member of the uh, uh, Turkish Academy of Sciences uh, since uh, 2012. Uh, it is a pleasure to host uh, Metin Muradoglu for uh, uh, the uh, webinar of today. Uh, I will now stop uh, sharing my screen and uh, leave the stage uh, to, to Metin. So, uh, please Metin, go ahead. You can uh, share your screen. All right, uh, thank you very much, uh, Francesco, for inviting me and also for a nice introduction. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, uh, today I will, I, I will talk about the effects of this collapse distance surfactant on turbulent bubbly channel flows. <clears throat> and we have started uh, uh, this work uh, relatively recently. So you are not going to listen to an expert, uh, but uh, someone who tries to learn uh, at the same time. Uh, uh, first, I will very briefly talk about motivations, then talk about the numerical method, uh, that is uh, front tracking method that we use. Uh, then I will briefly talk about uh, the analysis of uh, uh, the multi-phase flows. Uh, first, I will start with laminar one, which is later on creation of a single bubble. Uh, but the results uh, uh, are applicable to also turbulent flows. Then I will talk about uh, turbulent bubble flows uh, with increasing uh, friction radius number. First, effects of soluble surfactant at relatively low uh, friction radius number. Then polymer uh, drug reduction, uh, uh, where we increase the radius number uh, uh, 180. Then polydispersity, uh, some preliminary results in fact from this part. Then I will talk about uh, uh, two topics that are in progress, and uh, finally I will conclude. First, I would like to uh, describe uh, direct numerical simulation. Uh, I did my PhD in turbulent combustion, but never used uh, uh, DNS. Uh, I uh, took it from uh, Greater Tregevason's uh, talk, and uh, uh, DNS has fully resolved and verified simulation of a validated system of equations. I highlight here the validated system of equations uh, that include non-trivial length and time scales. So we are not talking about a single bubble uh, in a channel. Uh, instead, uh, we are talking about uh, 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 the, the non-trivial length and time scales. But uh, I would like to highlight here validated system of equations because when we talk about uh, uh, this elasticity, uh, uh, it is not really a, a DNS uh, in this sense because the governing equations that I will talk uh, are not as good as uh, Navier-Stokes equations. Navier-Stokes equations we know are very good mathematical models, but then it comes to uh, viscoelasticity, 
models are not as good as uh, Navier stocks. And also for uh, surfactant, uh, same applies. <laughs> Uh, Multiphase flows are ubiquitous uh, uh, in nature and also in technological applications, cavitation, atomization, uh, that's also our interest, supplies, uh, microfluidics, uh, in which we have done a lot of work earlier uh, before moving into turbulence, and the blood flow or uh, blood cells, uh, which you can uh, treat as uh, multiphase flow and bubbly flow. For today, I will talk about the bubbly flow. <clears throat> uh, and uh, then we talk about the multiphase flows. Uh, we talk about, in fact, also challenges. Uh, and uh, uh, there are several challenges. Uh, most important one is that we have a moving and deforming interface separating different phases. And we have to follow that interface. And uh, that uh, interface evolves and also undergoes topological changes like coalescence or breakup. And uh, second uh, a big issue is uh, uh, this continuous variation of material properties from one phase to another, there will be discontinuous variation, uh, which causes the numerical difficulties when you try to simulate this numerically. <clears throat> Uh, there might be also more than two phases, of course, uh, but in this talk, I will stick with only two phases. Uh, if you are interested in equations, we use one field formulation. I will repeat these equations several times later. And uh, we, we, we write down, uh, oops, there is a row missing in the first term. I checked several times, but still missing. Uh, and. Uh, uh, we write down a single set of equations for entire computational domain, including all the phases. Uh, we allow uh, material properties then then viscosity the very discontinuously across the interface. And we have uh, additional term uh, to account for uh, surface tension. Uh, and we solve uh, uh, incompressible flow of equations, so there is incompressibility conditions. And we define uh, a color function, uh, which indicates uh, the, the uh, uh, different phases. Uh, if it is two phase, uh, for example, a color function one uh, refers to inside of uh, the dispersed phase and zero is outside. Once you determine this uh, indicator function or color function, then you can set material properties everywhere in fluid domain. This is the approach we use, as uh, many people uh, do. Uh, and uh, I will very briefly uh, talk about uh, the front tracking method. Uh, it was developed by uh, Trigavasan uh, in early 90s. And in this method, uh, we use both Eulerian fixed grid, on which we, we solve flow equations and all field equations and we use Lagrangian grid uh, to represent the interface. And we compute, for example, surface tension force at the interface on this Lagrangian grid and uh, the distributed on Eulerian grid. And uh, Lagrangian grid uh, is made up of uh, uh, Lagrangian marker points. And uh, between these two, two, two marker points, we call a uh, front element. And since it evolves uh, with time uh, and in, with, with flow, uh, it stretches uh, or uh, 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 deforms too much, then uh, we restructure this uh, uh, Lagrangian grid every time. This is two dimensional version. So we have fluid one and fluid two. You can have uh, third and fourth fluids. There is no restriction for that. Then you go to 3D. Now interface is represented by uh, Again, a uh, Lagrangian grid, but now it is uh, triangular, uh, the surface. And uh, the corner of this triangle uh, are marker points. And uh, we have a linked list for each element, uh, which uh, knows uh, uh, its uh, uh, marker points, its corner points, as well as its neighbors. So uh, uh, we, we again compute the surface tension and all surface related quantities at the interface and distribute it on uh, Eulerian grid. Then we solve the flow of uh, field equations as usual. And we interpolate velocity 
the, uh, from the Eulerian grid to move uh, marker points. This is well established in numerical techniques, so uh, he didn't contribute anything to this uh, numerical method. I just took it from uh, Greta Tegavasan. But we added uh, some uh, 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 more physics uh, to it. Uh, let me uh, say a few words about the numerical method. Uh, flow equations are solved using a projection method on a staggered grid. And uh, we use, uh, by the way, we solve the flow equations in non-conservative form. It turns out that non-conservative form uh, is better uh, to, to preserve uh, mass and other uh, important uh, uh, conserved quantities uh, in our uh, the case. And we use a third order quick scheme uh, for convective terms in flow equations, now we have Stokes equations. And we use second order predictor corrector uh, uh, explicit scheme for time integration. And we use FFT based uh, Poisson solver developed by Petro Costa. And we use it to use Hybrid uh, uh, and uh, the multi grid uh, solver in Hybrid. But it turns out this FFT is much more uh, uh, efficient compared to Hybrid, especially the, the kind of the problem we are interested in. So we are uh, very happy about this uh, solver. Uh, for bulk surfactant uh, concentration, I will talk about later. We use uh, fifth order Vino Z scheme. And it turns out it is uh, significant to use higher order method uh, for convective terms in uh, uh, scalar uh, the fields. And for viscoelastic models that also I will talk about later, uh, we use the log conformation to get around uh, 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 the, the problem of high Weisenberg number. And uh, again, convective terms are treated using fifth order Fino scheme. And uh, all other central, uh, the spatial uh, differences are uh, uh, approximated using uh, the central differences. And code is fully parallelized, uh, including the interface altogether. Uh, for uh, Eulerian grid, we use usual domain decomposition. For uh, uh, Lagrangian grid, we use so-called particle uh, partitioning. Uh, first, I would like to talk about effects of soluble surfactant on lateral migration of a single bubble. This is important not only in uh, turbulent channel flows, but also in macrofluidics and some other applications. And uh, the results in fact apply on uh, uh, very low uh, rainous number flow up to very high rainous number turbulent flows. And first, uh, 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 let me say a few words about surfactants. Uh, I took this uh, beautiful uh, uh, animation from web uh, in early 2000 and I lost the uh, all the information about uh, the website, so I cannot give uh, uh, credit to uh, creators. But uh, this beautifully shows the, uh, the, the surfactant here. And on top, we have the clean interface. This is the uh, uh, essentially Hadamard Rabinsky solution uh, for a spherical bubble rising in a quiescent flow. And you have two nice uh, 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 heel vortices here. When you have uh, 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 surfactant, uh, which may exist as impurities or as a deliberate system to manipulate it, and uh, uh, surfactant molecules tend to collect that interface because uh, uh, it is uh, uh, thermodynamically more appealing for them. And as they collect that interface, uh, they form a buffer zone between two fluids and reduces uh, uh, surface tension. As uh, distribution of this uh, surfactant at the interface is not uniform, it causes so-called Marangoni stresses, which oppose the flow and it tries to rigidify interface and increase uh, drag. And uh, it is known that uh, a minute amount of uh, surfactant may change the whole uh, bubble flow structure. I will give you some examples uh, 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 later. And it is challenging uh, computationally because there should be a continuous mass exchange between interface and the bulk fluid. And uh, it is uh, difficult to maintain. And uh, mass transfer uh, is only, uh, uh, only one side. For example, if surfactant is outside of the, the bubble, 
then you have to exchange uh, uh, mass uh, with outside uh, bulk fluid. Uh, if uh, uh, we are concerned with the surfactant, then uh, we have uh, additional uh, marangonic stresses appearing here. And we have also effects on uh, Laplace pressure, but that is uh, uh, less significant compared to marangonic stresses. And uh, surface tension uh, coefficient is function of uh, this, uh, the concentration of surfactant at the interface, and it evolves. And by the way, for this, uh, we also use applied pressure for the quantity conditions. And, uh, the surfactant evolves at the interface uh, uh, according to uh, attraction diffusion equation derived by Howard Stone in 1990. Uh, and uh, bulk surfactant concentration also evolves uh, in, uh, uh, in uh, bulk fluid uh, according to attraction diffusion equation again. And in reality, there is a, in the, the, the boundary condition at the interface, but uh, uh, we converted this uh, boundary condition uh, into source term. So uh, the source term is computed uh, at the interface uh, according to this uh, uh, kinetic uh, equation. Then uh, we distribute this source term as a negative source into bulk fluid in a conservative manner. And it turns out uh, it works uh, very well uh, for our purpose. And surface tension is related to uh, so effectant concentration, uh, according to equation of state here, we use nonlinear equation of state. Uh, it's not near uh, uh, equation. And let's, uh, 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 let me little talk about the uh, motivation uh, of the, the, this work. And I saw this, uh, the, the, the work in uh, early 2008 when it was published but started working on this during my sabbatical essentially in 2013. And here, uh, 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 Takagi et al. from Japan performed a beautiful experiment. And uh, they have the vertical channel here, there is a flow of, and they introduce uh, the bubbles uh, at the bottom here. And on the right, uh, you see the bubble injection point here. And when you look at it, this is a rectangular channel and uh, 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 the width is uh, 40 millimeter and uh, the, uh, the length uh, uh, and uh, another, uh, the width is 400. So compared to that one, uh, this width is much smaller, 10 times smaller. And uh, uh, the measurements are taken from this uh, small window here. Uh, before uh, uh, giving the experimental results, uh, I would like to give some uh, computation results before the experiment. And Trigavasan group uh, has performed uh, a lot of simulations for this uh, bubble flow. Uh, they call this the DNS, even if it is lamina, some cases, but they also performed uh, the DNS for uh, turbulent flows. <laughs> And they always found that if a bubble is uh, 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 spherical, uh, it is not very much deformable. Uh, because of the Magnus effect, uh, 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 the bubbles move towards the wall and form a wall layer on the wall here. And uh, they, they, they did this work uh, in 90s and early to 2000. And uh, they always observed uh, the wall formation, uh, the bubble uh, uh, layer formation on the wall. But uh, it hasn't been really observed experimentally. Uh, I will talk about it uh, later uh, because uh, later uh, we found because it was uh, 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 because of surfactant. Uh, in downflow, uh, uh, then uh, the lift force uh, switches the, the direction and bubbles move towards the center line. But this is important because if you are using this, for example, in heat exchanger, and bubbles will uh, uh, move to the, the surface of this exchanger and uh, they prevent heat transfer, uh, which might be very significant in an uh, uh, application. And how about the experiment? Uh, Japanese group first used very purified uh, clean water and uh, uh, when, uh, 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 and it, it is clean water, there is no surfactant for this case. 
when they injected the bubbles, bubbles coalesce and make larger bubbles and larger bubbles are deformable and they move towards the center line. That is the first experiment they performed. Then they introduced very little bit of surfactant using the pentanol, uh, 4 to 2 ppm, at the middle figure here. And when you add very little bit of surfactant, you prevent the coalescence of bubbles. So bubbles do not coalesce. But uh, uh, it is not uh, really uh, easy to see, but uh, there will be the bubble uh, layer formation on the wall. You will see a lot of bubbles collected on the wall here, the middle figure. And when they increase the uh, amount of surfactant, now they obtain a homogeneous distribution of bubbles throughout the channel. Uh, now they also uh, 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 increase the uh, uh, strength of bubble instead of uh, T-pantanol. They also use Triton X100 and they use only 2 ppm of Triton X100. And again, bubble distribution is very homogeneous. Okay. And we will uh, perform simulations both for uh, T-pantanol and also Triton X100 to, to, to see uh, effects of the strength of uh, surfactant. So uh, this was published uh, also in uh, annual review of fluid mechanics. Essentially, I think it was in the same year. Uh, now, uh, here is uh, our computation setup. First, we consider single bubble. Uh, and we examined the effects of surfactant on um, uh, later on creation of single bubble. And uh, uh, we, we have done also the, 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 the simulations for fully turbulent flow, but the results I will present are for uh, laminar flow. And results are the same in both laminar and turbulent flows. And here is the setup. Uh, we initialize the bubble and we have uh, two parallel walls. And we have the periodic boundary conditions uh, 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 in bottom and top uh, the walls here. And we have also periodic boundary conditions in X directions. So we have periodic boundary conditions in X, in X and Z uh, directions. And we have the, the no slip boundary conditions on the uh, uh, Y direction. Uh, and uh, this is uh, uh, the little movie. I'm not very good at mo the making movies. And this is periodic, so it starts, uh, comes back to the bottom again. Uh, and you see a gradually bubble. It is not very visible here, but if you pay attention, bubble moves towards the center of the channel. Uh, I will show off, uh, more results here. Uh, we performed uh, these simulations for uh, different uh, surfactant concentrations. And C infinity is the bulk surfactant concentration. When it is zero, it is uh, clean. So uh, this YW represents the distance from the wall. Uh, and uh, this uh, dash line, black dash line is clean case. In clean case, uh, uh, bubble uh, moves towards the wall, that distance decreases and eventually stabilizes on the wall of uh, the channel. Then we uh, add very little bit of, of uh, surfactant, uh, C infinity 0 0.05, uh, and uh, still bubble moves the wall, but now moves slower than the clean case, and, but eventually it stabilizes uh, at the interface. When you look at surfactant distribution, you can clearly see uh, direction of the Marangoni stresses. Uh, here, I, the left side is uh, the side to the wall, and the right is side to the center of the channel. And we see uh, the, we have concentration uh, of surfactant, uh, high concentration of sur surfactant on uh, the, the, the uh, center of the channel side. Uh, when we increase at 0 0.1, it's almost critical. For a long time, it states, uh, it keeps essentially its uh, position laterally. Then it uh, starts moving towards the center of the channel. And above this value, for example, 0 0.25, 0 0.5 or one, and bubble uh, moves towards the, the, the center of the channel and uh, the, the, uh, uh, stabilizes at the center of the channel. Here, uh, we use the Rayness number 1000 
And Peckler number is artificially low here. Of course, in reality, Peckler number is order of 10 to 5. But uh, since we cannot really resolve uh, a mass boundary layer, uh, we keep uh, Peckler number uh, uh, relatively small here. And it will be the case throughout our uh, uh, results. And we also check the effects of the strength of the surfactant. Uh, again, we observe the same thing. Uh, if you increase the strength of the surfactant while keeping bulk surfactant concentration same, and uh, uh, the bubble uh, starts moving towards the center of the, the channel. And it overcomes uh, uh, aerodynamic force and uh, moves the center of channel. And we also test that uh, uh, effects of uh, solubility. Uh, and solubility influences only transient regime, but eventually uh, the final result is essentially the same. So you can uh, use uh, insoluble model uh, if you are not really interested in the transient uh, motion, uh, at least for, for, for these uh, values of concentration. Uh, and we didn't plan to do this, but we also observed the path instability of bubbles when they arrive at the center of the channel. And when you look at the clean case, in fact, we also observed the path instability for clean case, but I will not show it here. Contamination is more interesting for our case. Uh, when uh, you have sufficient uh, amount of uh, concentration and uh, when you increase the earthwash number, which increases uh, 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 deformability of the bubble. So as you increase earthwash number, you also increase deformability, bubble becomes more deformable. Then uh, when it reaches the center of the channel, it starts oscillating. That is what uh, uh, we call path instability. <laughs> What we found is that path instability occurs both in clean and contaminated cases, but surfactant triggers uh, path instability earlier, and also it amplifies uh, 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 the amplitude of uh, oscillations. Uh, now, after uh, the, the, the understanding uh, effects of surfactant on a single bubble, now we, we move on to turbulent uh, bubble flows and uh, look at the effects of soluble surfactant and viscoelasticity when you have the many bubbles in turbulent environment. <laughs> and uh, first we consider a very small box. Uh, this is called, uh, I think, uh, unit uh, uh, minimum flow units uh, coined by Kim et al. Uh, and uh, our uh, friction radius number is 127.3. We choose this because uh, greater Tregovasan has performed uh, uh, simulations for the same uh, radius number. And uh, some values for uh, surfactant is highlighted here in blue and viscoelastic parameters are highlighted by uh, the red. And we also only vary uh, the Weisenberg number uh, uh, to, to examine the effects of viscoelasticity we keep a uh, ratio of uh, uh, the viscosity, uh, solvent viscosity divided by total viscosity fixed at 0 0.9, and polymer ex ex extensibility is also fixed uh, to 60. Uh, let me say a few words about uh, some exotic behavior of viscosity fluid. Probably all audience uh, know, know about this. And uh, for example, there is a road climbing effect uh, when uh, you uh, the, the rotate the road and it climbs up the road, which is just opposite to what uh, we observe in Newtonian fluid. Uh, another uh, effect is uh, uh, dice well effect. Uh, and uh, finally, there will be like uh, uh, the siphon uh, effect. Uh, and these are all well-known uh, the effects, but uh, I'm not going to talk any of these effects, although we have performed some uh, simulations regarding these uh, effects. Uh, we are more interested in high radius number uh, the, the effects. Here are the flow equations with viscoelasticity. Now we have additional term here uh, coming from the, the, the polymer stresses. 
and it evolves by uh, uh, nonlinear uh, uh, governing equations. We use the Fini P model, although in our uh, code we have other uh, Fini models and Altoid P as well, as well as uh, one viscoplastic uh, the, the, the model. But we use uh, Fini P in these simulations. And Fini P is based on essentially dumbbell models. It is uh, only difference uh, with uh, uh, Altoid P is that uh, we give uh, 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 upper uh, the limit for extension of the polymers. In Altoid P, that is, uh, it, it's assumed that the polymers can extend infinitely, but here we put a limit uh, to extension of the polymers, and it, uh, it, it is characterized by this L square term. And uh, uh, this B is symmetric, it must remain symmetric, and to maintain uh, its symmetry in, uh, in uh, numerical calculations, we use so-called log conformation method developed by Patel and Cooperman in 2005, and we found it is very uh, useful. All the rest are the same as what I have uh, said before. First, of course, validation. Uh, we performed a, a simulation for single phase flow and compared with DNS result of Kim et al. in 1987. And we found a very good agreement uh, with, uh, for, for single phase case. And for two phase case, again, we performed simulations for the same case as studied by Lou et al. And again, we found a very good agreement. So after, uh, uh, well, the verification of our code, we perform simulations. First, the visual aid, and uh, when we have a clean uh, bubble case, all bubbles move uh, to, uh, uh, to, to, to the wall and form the wall layer there. On the very left here, you see all the bubbles are collected on the wall, and it reduces uh, 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 flow rate because it increases the drag, and because uh, flow rate uh, reduces, uh, the flow becomes laminar eventually. When you look at here, there, uh, uh, it's essentially a laminar flow. When you add very little bit of surfactant, C infinity 0 0.25, and we see uh, turbulence is maintained, and uh, uh, the bubbles are uniformly distributed uh, in the channel. Then you increase further, in fact, it is even more homogeneous. Uh, then you look at the close there uh, in stream-wise uh, wall normal and uh, uh, span-wise uh, view. And we see for uh, uh, clean case, bubbles uh, collect on the wall and form a wall layer there. And then you have to surfactant, uh, it uh, stabilizes uh, uh, and homogenizes the bubble throughout. Uh, then we have a viscoelastic plus surfactant together for uh, Weisenberg number five. And here uh, contours are the normal uh, stress difference. And to our surprise, uh, uh, the viscoelastic stresses act in opposite direction of Marangoni stresses. It promotes formation of wall layer. In fact, in a very low rainous number of flow uh, in macro uh, the channel, people found just opposite. I still couldn't fully understand uh, why this is the case for high rainous number, but this is what we observed. Uh, these elastic stresses uh, uh, counteract the uh, Marangoni stresses and uh, promotes uh, uh, formation of wall layer. And when we look at the, uh, the flow rate, uh, we uh, normalize by single phase flow up here. Uh, so when uh, this value is one, it is equivalent to a single phase. And if it is below one, uh, we have increase of uh, drag and re reduction of, of flow rate. When you have the clean, we have large reduction of flow rate. Uh, uh, it is uh, the more than 50% in fact. When we add the surfactant, we approach back to single phase flow because it homogenizes and it, uh, 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 it removes uh, the formation of uh, bubble layer on the wall. Uh, and when you look at the, the flow rate, uh, the, the velocity profiles again, this is the clean, and you see a reduction in flow rate when uh, there is no surfactant. And for the viscoelastic case, uh, 
Again, picture is similar, but not as dramatic as uh, uh, in the case of Newtonian uh, delta fluid, because uh, viscoelastic uh, distresses uh, uh, reduces effect of surfactant. Uh, and this is uh, what uh, we, we see here. And here uh, you, you see the clean case, but uh, these uh, solid lines are clean, and we increase the Weizenberg number from zero to 10. Uh, and when uh, they, 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 they act together with surfactant, we have these uh, uh, other uh, lines here. And uh, later, uh, we, uh, we, we got access to uh, uh, the uh, computers, increase the Reynolds number, and look at the effects of soluble surfactant on polymer uh, drag, uh, drag reduction. This is well known, well known uh, Tom's effect. And for single phase flow, people have recognized this since uh, 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 as early as I think it was 40s. Uh, I didn't put it here. Uh, so Tom's uh, observed this, I think, in 1943, uh, first time. And later, people uh, examined this in full detail almost, but for most of our single phase flow. Here, we would like to examine effects of. Uh, 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 surfactant when we have uh, the bubbles. Uh, and here is uh, our, uh, the box. Now we have the longer uh, channel uh, and we have the finer grid as well uh, because our Reynolds number is high and other uh, numerical values are given here for, uh, let me check the time here. Uh, uh, and we use now physical properties of two uh, surfactants. Uh, uh, one is uh, one pentanol and another is Triton X100. And compared to one pentanol, Triton X100 is much stronger. So uh, when you see a Triton X100, you should understand it is very strong uh, surfactant. It reduces surface tension, even if there is very little bit of Triton X100. And we use two different properties to examine uh, uh, kinetic properties of surfactant. Uh, again, first, the visual aid. Uh, on the uh, uh, top here, uh, first we have the clean. And uh, for clean case, again, the bubbles move towards the wall and form wall layers. And uh, top and bottom are walls here. Then we add very little bit, 0.1, uh, C infinity, the uh, Triton X, which corresponds to, I think, at 1 ppm or even less, uh, probably. And uh, we see turbulence is maintained. Uh, in clean case, uh, it laminarizes very quickly. And for uh, surfactant case, uh, we have uh, fully turbulent and bubbles are homogeneously distributed across the channel. And then we increase it further. Uh, and uh, 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 the homogenization, uh, it, it homogenizes uh, even more and uh, the, the uh, turbulence is maintained. When we use uh, weak uh, surfactant, for example, one pentanol, uh, 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 using the same amount of Triton X, 100, and it has uh, no effect at all. And you have to use a lot of uh, pentanol probably. In fact, we tried very high values and strength is very critical. Uh, if you have a very high uh, concentration, then you do not have really uh, the marangoni stress. It covers the entire surface of bubble, just reduces uh, uh, the Laplace pressure, but it does not really uh, the, the induce uh, sufficient marangoni stresses. And then we look at the skin friction, and uh, we use the color coding here for uh, uh, Triton X100. And initially, we initialize the surfactant to equilibrium value of the surfactant. So initially, bubbles are uh, the, the, the contaminated for the green lines here. And so uh, this skin friction is normalized by skin friction coefficient of Newtonian single phase flow. So uh, this is all Newtonian, by the way, first. And if it is one, it is same as the single uh, phase flow. And, uh, Later, we initialize to zero. So initially, bubbles are clean and uh, get uh, contaminated uh, uh, eventually. And in that case, we have the transient behavior here. But eventually, 
it switches back to single phase flow. But when you use uh, one pentanol, and uh, its effect is much weaker compared to uh, Triton X100. Uh, then you look at the, the mean velocity uh, void fraction. Here we use just Triton X100. And you don't see the, the, all these lines because they overlap with single phase uh, in the first figure here. So it approach, uh, approaches the single phase uh, uh, velocity profile for all values of uh, uh, Triton X100 concentrations except for the zero. For clean case, this is the green line here. We have a large uh, uh, reduction in, in uh, volume flow rate and there is large uh, increase of uh, uh, drag. And when you look at the uh, void fraction, for clean case, we have the wall layer here on the left here. This is the wall layer. And we, when we add uh, Triton X100, it homogenizes completely. Uh, we also checked the uh, RMS values and etc. but I will pass those part. We also uh, examined the uh, uh, contribution from different uh, components of uh, uh, stress and stress balance. Uh, dash lines are single phase, so you can compare with the single case here. For clean case, there is a huge difference between single phase, this is dashed, compared to the solid line here. But when you had the uh, surfactant, the difference between dashed and solid lines uh, uh, are small, meaning that we approach the single phase uh, behavior. Uh, when we have the viscoelastic uh, uh, the, the, uh, fluid uh, uh, in ambient, and for the clean case, and in Newtonian, we have the wall layer. When we have the clean viscoelastic, still we have the wall layer. But when we add Triton X100, and again, bubbles move uh, uh, center of the channel and homogenizes across the cross section. Again, this is very similar behavior. And uh, this is still ongoing simulations. We have uh, two simulations bottom here, which haven't uh, completed yet, uh, still running. Uh, and uh, you, you see uh, the, the dash lines are uh, uh, clean, viscoelastic, and uh, as viscosity increases, uh, you see uh, it promotes the formation of wall layer and increases uh, the skin friction. And of course, for single, uh, uh, the, the single phase flow, there will be reduction by viscosity when you increase Weisenberg number, but increase due to like the blockage of the, the wall by, uh, by uh, uh, the wall layer of uh, the bubbles, uh, um, uh, is much larger than the, 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 the single phase reduction. So we have a large increase of uh, skin friction uh, for, for, for this case. Then we have the surfactant and it, it, uh, uh, it becomes same as uh, uh, the single phase flow here. Uh, now, then uh, you check uh, uh, effects of uh, uh, the, the, the uh, so effectant on uh, uh, polymer drag reduction. Uh, this purple, uh, the, the, uh, the line is the clean case here. And uh, there's the uh, dashed uh, red line is log low. So this is Newtonian behavior. And uh, when you look at this, the magenta line, it is the maximum drag reduction that is theoretical value obtained by WIRC. Uh, and uh, we are somewhere in between. And people call, uh, uh, if you have more than 40% direct reduction, it is uh, uh, the, the high direct, direct reduction. If it is below 40%, which is in our case, uh, people call this a low uh, direct reduction regime. We are in low direct reduction reg regime for here, but uh, uh, we haven't fully examined uh, details of these simulations. In fact, it, 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 we haven't completed the simulations yet, but uh, this is uh, consistent with our intuition. Um, and then, uh, this is the first figure is the same as before. When you look at the uh, 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 void fraction, and uh, for clean case, we have uh, the bubble uh, layer formation. For others, we don't have uh, that uh, formation. 
at Mississippi Peace Spot. Same is true uh, for uh, uh, stress balance. For clean case, there is a big difference between single phase and uh, uh, the, the two phase uh, cases. But when you have uh, uh, strong enough surfactant, uh, 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 the difference gets smaller. And finally, we perform the simulations uh, uh, using polydispersity, uh, polydispersed uh, uh, bubbles. And uh, uh, again, uh, for this case, we also increase the rainus number uh, to 250. And because we use the European uh, supercomputer system. And uh, here are the configurations. And for this, the yellow part, uh, the bubbles uh, move towards the wall for these sizes. And uh, for this, uh, the blue one, bubbles move uh, towards the, the center. And void fraction is fixed to 3% for all the simulations here. And uh, Earthwash number is varied from 0 uh, 0 0.5 to 2. And uh, number of bubbles to keep uh, this 3% of void fraction increases at, as we get uh, smaller bubbles, right? As it gets larger, number of bubbles also decrease. Uh, uh, some other uh, uh, the, the numerical parameters, by the way, perform all the simulations in Ulich uh, using the praise resources. Uh, and uh, uh, we compare with uh, the simulations done by Tegavetsen et al. Uh, and they, they, they used on the clean bubble case. Here we use, uh, uh, contaminated and we use much finer grid because we have a larger uh, range number. And first uh, again bubble distribution. Uh, this is clean Newtonian, the first one on the top uh, left uh, and uh, small bubbles move to the, the, the wall and form the wall layers and large bubbles which are more deformable uh, move uh, uh, the center of the channel. That is what we expect from our uh, earlier simulations. When you increase the Weizenberg number 20, again, picture does not change because uh, the small bubbles uh, fill, uh, 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 the cover entire uh, the, the surface of the wall and large bubbles have only one option uh, that is uh, uh, to stay in middle of the channel. Then we have very little bit of uh, contamination, this is Newtonian, and uh, we see homogenization uh, of uh, the bubbles and even small bubbles uh, move towards the center of the channel. And when uh, we increase Weizenberg number to 20, still the same picture, but this time you see more small bubbles on the wall because uh, as I mentioned before, uh, the viscoelasticity promotes formation of the wall layer. Uh, then you have uh, Weizenberg number uh, 20 and this is Monodisperse, we all have the small bubble case here. Again, we have, uh, because of the large value of the Weizenberg number and small amount of surfactant, uh, we have again formation of the, uh, the bubble layer on the wall. And then you have the large bubbles, they are deformable, even if in the absence of the, 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 the surfactant, probably they, will, uh, they would move also center of the channel. And now I just rotated uh, uh, the channel uh, just to fit it uh, together. And this is for fixed contamination 0 0.1 and increase Weizenberg number from five to 40. And as we increase, uh, we, we see more small bubbles collected uh, on the wall. And when you look at skin friction uh, and uh, uh, we, we, we have uh, uh, contamination first 0 0.1 uh, and there's uh, uh, the, the lower one is uh, monodispersed uh, the bubbles and here. So for that case, we have formation of the wall layer. Uh, uh, this is uh, skin friction. This is monodispersed bubbles with earthwash number 0 0.5. And this is a small earthwash number. So bubbles are not really deformable. So uh, they, uh, uh, they increase uh, uh, formation of a uh, uh, bubble cluster on the wall. And when you go about the uh, bottom here, uh, uh, the, the, this one, uh, uh, we have very deformable bubble. 
So deform because of the deformation, it moves towards the center of the channel. And these uh, runs are not really completed because there was the shutdown of a brace system during the summer and they didn't, didn't give us uh, additional time to complete these simulations. But this gives a uh, uh, clear picture about what uh, we, we should expect between these two extreme cases, green and the blue ones. And we have also a uh, void fraction distribution here. And for monodispersed uh, uh, non-deformable bubble, we see a large uh, uh, number of bubbles collected close to the wall. And this is end of my uh, uh, presentation for the bubble flow part. And I would like to give a uh, uh, talk also about a little bit uh, in progress uh, research. One is another exotic behavior of uh, uh, this elasticity that is negative wake formation. We perform only a few simulations for this one. This is the lamina, by the way, and this is buoyancy driven flow. And we see negative wake behind uh, the bubble, which is peculiar behavior for uh, viscoelasticity. And when we had surfactant, we didn't observe uh, much influence of surfactant for this one. And uh, we also performed uh, simulations for the case studied by uh, uh, Dieter Botte at Darmstadt. Uh, and uh, this is the closed view. You see a negative peak uh, uh, at the center here, bottom. And uh, this is important because the uh, Dieter Botte and some experimental people have performed both experiment and simulations. They show there is a rapid jump in terminal velocity of uh, bubbles at a critical value. Uh, we observed that jump, but we didn't fully characterize it and currently we are working on it. Another one is the evaporation and combustion. I have a background in turbulent combustion back at Cornell in 20 more years ago. Uh, so I still have interest. And uh, there's a spray combustion is our main interest, but there is also some other applications like pattern formation uh, for drying droplet and uh, maybe the blood uh, patterns and etc. For these cases, uh, we have additional terms here because of uh, evaporation and reaction. And first of all, because of the evaporation, we have the source term for continuity equation. We have the source term for energy equation. And we also solve specious mass fraction uh, uh, here. We perform simulations only in 2D here and uh, lamina. Uh, uh, there's a single droplet case, and there's uh, two droplets interacting. This is with chemical reactions. This is uh, uh, diesel fuel uh, with auto ignition, uh, and uh, there is a blow off of, of the flame. And uh, when you increase ambient temperature, it keeps uh, burning. Uh, and we, we, we compared with uh, uh, earlier uh, simulation results uh, uh, for delay time and etc. And as I said, this is only 2D but we are currently extending it uh, to a full 3D, then we will perform simulations. Let me uh, summarize. Uh, we have fully parallelized 3D front tracking uh, code that we use to examine effects of soluble surfactant and viscoelasticity on turbulent bubble flows. Uh, and simulations are performed for increasing uh, uh, rainous number, uh, increasing based on resources we have. Uh, and up to friction uh, uh, radius number 250. What we found is clean bubbles migrate uh, uh, towards the wall and form wall layer, increase drag, reduce flow rate, and laminarize the flow. And contaminated bubbles uh, are uniformly distributed across the channel. No wall layer is formed and flow rate approaches that of the single phase uh, flow. These scholastic stresses, to my surprise at least, oppose uh, the surfactant-induced marangoni stresses and promotes uh, uh, formation of wall layers. The formation of wall layer uh, for combined uh, case uh, depends on the interplay uh, of in inertial and elastic and marangoni forces. Uh, absorption kinetics highly affect the dynamics of uh, turbulent bubble flows, uh, sur sorption kinetics of uh, surfactant here, and uh, uh, using uh, 
strong surfactant is the key uh, for homogenization of the bubble. And for viscoelastic turbulent flows in the presence of clean bubble, the polymer directed action property of viscoelastic is completely lost. Then we add very small amount of strong surfactant, we recover uh, 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 polymer reduction uh, effect uh, in turbulent uh, flows. Before closing, I uh, thank uh, my uh, sponsor, uh, Turkish NSF Tübitak, Turkish Academy of Sciences, PRAISE, uh, which was very instrumental and EU RISE project. And uh, almost all the work I presented was done uh, by Zahir Ahmed, who just graduated uh, recently, uh, a month ago, in fact, and currently to another CIS project. And I have also a couple of collaborators. I thank you very much for your attention and I will be happy uh, to answer your questions. So thank you, uh, Matthew, for uh, this very interesting talk. Uh, we already have uh, three questions in the, in the chat. Uh, so I invite the, the, um, uh, the participant to open his mic or her mic and uh, uh, pose the question uh, uh, personally. If, if they can, otherwise I can read the, the chat. Okay, then I'm gonna I'm gonna read the the questions. Ah, okay, uh, there is a mic problem. Okay, so I will uh, I will read the 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 questions in the chat. So the first question is: Can the bubble maintain the same Y uh, for a, a certain uh, infinite concentration below zero point one and above zero point zero five? How does that force balance works? for suppressing lateral lift force. I think it's referring uh, to, to the case in which you kind of found, uh, find uh, uh, a limiting, uh, the proof of a limiting uh, concentration for a bubble migration. Uh, Francesco, I missed the first part. I'm sorry, I have uh, pure uh, internet connections here. Yes. Uh, could you repeat the first part of the question again? Yeah, the question is, can the bubble maintain the same distance from the wall uh, for, uh, a, um, for a concentration which is between uh, 0 0.05 and 0 0.1? Yeah. Well, it is, it is unstable position. You can stabilize there for a long time. Uh, but, uh, uh, well, first of all, uh, if it moves towards the wall, it stabilizes there somewhere. If it moves the, the, the channel, uh, depending on the, the shear rate there, uh, it will stabilize there. But if you would like to stabilize a specified position, you can determine amount of uh, surfactant concentration, theoretically, but uh, uh, in practice, uh, I don't think it will, it will be possible to maintain that uh, the, the, the fixed distance to wall uh, for a long time. But for short time, it should be possible. In fact, we try to find that point uh, uh, by simulations. We, we were almost there. If you see one of uh, 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 the results, uh, for example, here. Uh, when you look at, for example, this green line, that is 0 0.1, uh, the case. And uh, you, you see it stabilizes almost uh, uh, the same position from the wall for a long time, but eventually it moves either towards the wall or towards the center of the channel. Okay. And uh, thank you, thank you for the for your reply. Uh, and uh, there is there is actually another question from uh, the same participant, uh, which asks, uh, could you explain further on surfactant role uh, in uh, bringing bubbles to center and the role of viscoelastic viscoelasticity in bringing the bubbles back towards the wall. Uh, I mean, if I do not have surfactant, but I have viscoelastic, what happens? Could you explain on, uh, mm -hmm. could you elaborate on the, on the mechanism? We have very good understanding of uh, uh, effects of the surfactant. Uh, then you look at here, for example, uh, uh, the, 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 this first figure here. And in this case, the bubble, uh, 
the moves the wall and stabilizes close the walls. But you see uh, uh, the direction of the Marangoni stresses, uh, total Marangoni force. And left is the wall. So on the left hand side, I have the left uh, less uh, surfactant concentration. And the right side is uh, uh, the center of the channel where I have more uh, surfactant concentration. So I have large surface tension on the left and small surface tension on the right. And there is a Marangoni force acting towards the center of the channel. So it is easy to explain uh, for the surfactant, for, for, but for viscoelasticity, I had difficulty. In fact, my expectation was uh, that uh, uh, the viscoelastic stresses would uh, uh, induce the total force in the direction of uh, uh, center of the channel, but we found just opposite. And we tried to understand it by uh, examining uh, stress difference and uh, uh, it will be uh, uh, but I think we should perform the simulations for a single bubble uh, without the surfactant but with viscosity. We haven't done it yet because uh, it was surprising for us to find that uh, viscosity promotes formation of the bubble wall layer. Uh, since I read the uh, uh, the papers about the macrofluidics where people use this viscosity to focus the bubbles at the center of the channel. Uh, here we found just opposite. Uh, I, uh, we suspected uh, because we use Fini uh, P model which uh, uh, has property of uh, shear thinning. Uh, it could be related to shear thinning effect. So it is a, a subtle effect. It is not really very easy to, to, uh, to quantify. Uh, we haven't uh, examined it yet. So uh, my answer as a now is uh, we don't really know. Uh, it is still open at least uh, to me. And I would be happy if uh, uh, one participant or one person can explain it and uh, I will be very happy to hear. Francesco? Thank you for, for the reply. Um, uh, is there any other question for for Mehmet? Otherwise, I would like to, to ask one. But let's let's give priority to the to the other participants first. Are there other questions for from the audience? I have a quick question, uh, Francesco. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Christos. Yes. Um, what is the effect of the uh, the presence of the bubbles, even clean bubbles, on uh, ejections and sweeps on the wall? Uh, oh, well, that is a very good question, and in fact, uh, uh, we try to understand it. First, uh, initially, uh, for, for the, 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 the large amount of the, the, the data we have, our box was small. Uh, it was too small, it was the minimum flow unit. Uh, and second, the anus number was uh, also very small. And we try to uh, uh, the use uh, the tools uh, uh, for example, we try to uh, extract uh, uh, turbulence uh, 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 energy uh, 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 spectrum. Uh, we made some progress, but still uh, we don't have that tool to examine completely, to extract uh, the, the energy spectrum, that's first thing. Second, uh, we haven't really used the POD or uh, uh, DMD. We, we, we need to use those tools to extract the useful information. In fact, I should put it uh, 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 in future work. Uh, uh, currently, we are working on it. I, as I said at the very beginning, I do not really have experience uh, in uh, using those tools. I just started learning. Uh, but our uh, next goal is to use uh, uh, dynamic mode analysis or uh, POD is simplest probably. Uh, to extract like the structure of uh, really uh, uh, the turbulent flow, stakes and other uh, structures. But as I uh, currently, we only have the visual aid and it is not really uh, sufficient uh, to, 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 to gather uh, uh, information. Especially for high rainous number case, uh, I expect uh, we will, we will uh, reveal uh, some structure, but uh, uh, currently I don't have that information but it is very crucial and important uh, uh, aspect. 
Thank you. I was asking in particular because of this observation you made that uh, in the presence of uh, clean bubbles, the polymer drug reduction is lost. Mm -hmm. And I was just wondering whether the bubbles somehow uh, modify the ejections and sweeps without nevertheless modifying the drug. I think the main reason is that for that I understand that part because our bubbles are really very large compared to the channel size and they stick on the wall and uh, main increase in drag comes from uh, uh, the surface tension because they block uh, the, the channel. And uh, even the, our smallest bubble has the size of 10% of the channel, I believe, or uh, comparable. So if they stick to, uh, on the surface and they move slowly and resist uh, the flow uh, because of surf, uh, the surface tension, and that is the main reason uh, uh, in both uh, the, uh, the Newtonian and viscoelastic cases. But in real applications, of course, you will have the much larger channel compared to the bubble size, but we cannot afford it computationally currently. Okay, thanks, that was very clear, thank you. Yeah. Uh, if there are no other, uh, is there any other question from the audience? Uh, okay, also in the chat for the moment there is none, so uh, I may ask one question myself, sorry. Okay, uh, so um, yeah, so I, I was curious about the effect you showed with the polydispersed, uh, uh, with the polydispersed uh, bubbles, where you basically showed that they have two distinct behaviors basically relating to the size of the bubble, so to, to the deformability of the, of the bubble. Uh, and uh, my, my question is more like, how do you relate uh, this to, especially the small uh, defect of the small bubbles as, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with the effect of uh, particles, for example, in, uh, in the flow, uh, like rigid particles, which, which would uh, still be non-deformable, but they would not have uh, a surface tension. And if you imagine like light particles, do they behave totally differently? They don't have manganese stress. So if you have strong surfactants, you reduce the surface tension, you increase the, you reduce manganese forces. How does it relate to, to, to particles basically? Uh, yeah, yeah, people have performed a lot of simulations in fact for the solid particles and uh, uh, probably that field has been uh, better uh, examined. Uh, I think behavior would be similar. Uh, because it, like if you imagine a theoretical limit of having very, very large surface tension, then it will behave like a, 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 like a solid. But of course, uh, even if you have a spherical bubble, you have uh, uh, the, 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 the velocity at the surface, right? Uh, uh, that makes ma main difference between solid and the bubble. But I think uh, for solid uh, particle, uh, I expect the, 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 uh, the, the behavior will be similar and probably it will be even stronger uh, because the, there will be no surface, surface mobility for a solid particle. But as I said, you know, the, the, we haven't uh, examined that uh, the, the part. In fact, we don't have the utility to simulate the solid particles altogether. Uh, but my expectation, it would be similar, but I need to check it. Uh, and just uh, follow up with respect to to this question. So, uh, uh, of course, when when you mentioned uh, uh, if we add surfactants, we kind of uh, uh, prevent uh, coalescence of uh, bubbles and uh, mm -hmm. and so on. So, uh, uh, and so uh, you can kind of. Uh, Stabilize the, the, the regime with uh, by dispersed uh, bubbles or uh, polydispersed bubbles, just adding surfactants. Um, would that be an effective way to control the flow? In the sense, uh, can we kind of uh, make transition between regimes in which uh, we have uh, a, an effective uh, um, dynamics between bubbles of different sizes? just changing the amount of surfactants we inject in the system, can this be a, 
a control set if you it does not really apply. Yeah, I think I very much think uh, it is. Uh, 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 first of all, in our simulations, we do not allow coalescence or breakout because we don't have that utility in our code yet. Uh, 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 Although it is doable, I mean the the greater Tegavasan has been doing for a long time, but in our code we don't have that utility. Uh, but uh, uh, if you have a little bit of surfactant, you can stabilize uh, 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 emulsions. That is well-known process, in fact, in chemical process uh, industry. Uh, but uh, and also the Soldati has performed uh, beautiful simulations uh, to examine effects of surfactant uh, 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 on coalescence of uh, the, the bubbles. Uh, and they clearly show that uh, uh, effects uh, uh, of uh, surfactant, uh, which prevents the coalescence of bubbles. It redefines when they come close to contact and uh, they redefine uh, the, the surface. And because of the lubrication, uh, uh, they, they tend not to, uh, to touch each other. They repel each other. And it, it, it is, uh, I think, recent paper published probably last year and very well examined. Uh, uh, so uh, in our case, we just uh, uh, see uh, the, the effect because we do not allow uh, uh, the coalescence uh, uh, by design. But when you look at the like distance between bubbles and uh, uh, we can visually see also uh, that effect uh, in our simulations then you examine very closely. Uh, short answer is yes, I think that is the way. But you have to use, in our experience, you have to use strong enough uh, surfactant. That strength is probably more important than uh, amount of surfactant in bulk fluid. Okay, okay, thanks a lot for, for, the, for the very clear answer. Um, so is, is there any other question for, uh, for a meeting from the audience. Uh, this does not seem the case. We have one more question in the, in the chat, which is uh, uh, coming from a participant asking if the code is available in open source. It is not uh, because uh, for uh, the, the reason that I took the code from Tegavasan, so uh, main, uh, the, the, the author is uh, Greta Tegevason, uh, but I think he is pretty open to give uh, the code. Um, uh, on my side, I don't uh, mind uh, uh, sharing the code, but as I said, uh, uh, first we need to get permission from uh, Greta. Okay, okay, thanks. Um... So it seems we don't have any more questions from, from the audience. Uh, and uh, so uh, I would like to, to thank you once again, Metin, for this very interesting presentation and uh, for the excellent talk. Um, I remind to, to all the uh, participants that uh, next time will be our last round uh, of uh, seminars for, for this year. Uh, and uh, if you uh, if you missed something in the talk of uh, of Metin, I asked him permission at the beginning of this uh, seminar to post this uh, his webinar on uh, on the YouTube channel of the uh, of the um, uh, of the lab. Uh, please respect the copyright uh, uh, of his uh, of his talk. He shared with us uh, several informations and uh, research uh, contents which are not published yet. So uh, please take care of uh, respecting uh, uh, this. But uh, you can find more information and the information you can find basically the information shared in the talk shared today 